never fail to write the question number nand and nor are called universal gates because they perform all the logical operations of the basic gates breaks the execution of current process that instruction or signal is called as the interrupt signal hello students welcome to the question paper discussion of the digital electronics i'm dr saumeshri from department of computer science vidyashram first grade college in this uh, question paper session or model question paper discussion i'm going to tell you about or explain about the question paper pattern how does the questions will come what are the marks allotted for each of the question and how you can answer the questions okay i have taken the previous years question paper for the as a model so let's start this uh, question paper discussion here i am giving you the set of questions that has been asked in the question paper okay here we have 12 questions out of that you have to answer any 10 so the maximum marks is 80 in which part a will be for 20 marks and part b will be for remaining 60 marks okay so here we have 12 questions out of 12 you have to answer any 10 you can choose any 10 questions and you have to answer so it will get 10 into 2 that is 20 marks from part a okay so if you attend all the 10 questions you will easily get 20 marks without much effort okay so don't try to skip this part try to attend all the 10 questions as much as possible don't skip the questions or attend only 5 or 6 or 2 or 3 or uh, 8 or 9 attend all the questions 10 questions which will be little bit easier than the descriptive questions that are asked in part b so you can expect marks from this part so don't try to skip this attend all the 10 questions so that you can get maximum marks in this part okay then we have the part b with descriptive answers part b will be for 60 marks in 60 marks all the four unit questions will be covered okay from all the four units you will get unit 1 for 15 marks unit 2 question for 15 marks unit 3 again for 15 marks and the unit 4 again is for 15 marks so totally from four units you'll get the questions which covers the remaining 16 marks okay what is the pattern here is you will be having like this so this is from first unit you can observe these questions are from first unit what you need to know here is there will be two sub questions 13th is the question 12 up to 12 it will be in part a from 13th you will be having the descriptive questions descriptive questions will be divided like sub questions so one question will have two or three it left to the question papers setters how they want to set the paper so you will get two or three questions from one set you will have two sets of question in each unit this one and this one 
each will be asked for either 7 or 8. Each is asked for 7 or 8. You may get 5, 5, 5 covering the 15 marks. So this set will be 15 marks. This set will be for 15 marks. Here you can observe a term or that means either you can answer this set of question or you can answer this set of question. Okay, so you will get 15, if you attend this one, you will get 15 marks, you will be evaluated for 15 marks. If you attend this, your answer will be evaluated for again 15 marks. You can choose this one, which is more comfortable to you, you think you can answer, you can select that, either this one or this one. But don't mix up these two sets, you will lose the marks. Okay, so suppose if you attend this question, it may be asked for 8 marks and you think this, you can attend this one. This you have studied, you can attend this. This is asked for 7, seven marks, you have attended this one. If you think 8 plus 7, you will get 15, it will be wrong. So they will evaluate either for this or for this. If you get this marks and this marks will be compared, whichever is highest, that will be taken for the count, okay. If you have got 7 out of 8 in this and 5 out of 7 in this question, they will skip this mark, they will not consider this mark, only this 7 marks will be considered. That means you have lost your 5 marks because you have chosen different questions from two sets. Okay. You will get full marks. You will be evaluated for full marks only if you attend these two questions or these two. Don't combine these two, this one and this one. Either attend this or this answer this question or this question. That is why they have given the option or. Whichever you have studied, you can answer that. Either this one or this one. Even if you answer this, there is no use. You have lo loser lost all these marks. Five marks will be deducted from your total marks due to mixing of the questions from two sets. So never try to mix the answers or never try to attend the answers from two different sets. Okay. So this is the first one. This is as you can observe the second unit question. This is the second unit question. Then you have the third unit and fourth unit. Each unit will have this or option. Either you can select this set or this from the third unit. Either you can select this or this from the fourth unit. But don't mix the questions. Don't answer the questions from different sets. Okay. So this is about the brief discussion or brief review of how does the question paper will be. Okay. Next we shall come to the answer part. How does you have to answer? How much you have to answer? Same topic may be repeated in two marks question as well as descriptive questions. In that case, how you have to answer these questions? That is the main thing you have to remember. What is the advantage of the marks? Looking at the distribution of the marks is that one is you are going to save the time. Don't answer 10 to 20 sentence for a two marks question. For two marks question, two sentences are enough. Sometimes one sentence is also enough in case of definitions and uh, 
other uh, theoretical concepts. If you answer in only one sentence, that is also enough for two marks. Don't go for descriptive answer for the two marks question. Your time will be lost in answering these questions. Try to answer as quickly as possible for two marks question. Don't go for descriptive. Only give the enough answer for two marks. Don't drag it too much and finish off this part as fast as possible. And try to cover these questions in the first pages of the answer book. So that your uh, answer will be impressive for the validators. Like we said, first impression is the best impression. If your first page of the answer book is good, so you'll get an advantage of the valuation. So it will be most impressive part. So try to make it the first page of the answer sheet as neat as possible. Keep it neat and other answers also try to keep it neat. Give a descriptive answers, write the question numbers or if you don't mention the question number, you may lose the marks because um, they may not worry about what is the question you have answered. So don't forget to mention the question number. Never forget to answer the or attend the or write the question number. Always before starting answering the question, first mention the question number in the left side of the page. So there will be column it has given. You know about the answer sheets. You have attended so many examinations. So first write the question number, then start writing the answer so that you will not lose the marks unnecessarily for not mentioning the question number. Even though your answer is right, the evaluators cannot find to which question you have answered. So never fail to write the question number. All right. So these are the 12 questions. Here we have the answers for this. First question is, write the symbols used in hexadecimal number system. Symbols you can use is numbers 0 to 9, numerical symbols 0 to 9 and the alphabetical numbers A to F. Okay. So second question is, write the two's complement of 10110. You know about the method of calculating the two's complement, isn't it? So either you can follow zero, keep the first non-zero one as it is, then change the values, change the values, or you can replace like two's complement 10110. Two's complement is 01001. To this, add a 1. So you'll get 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So this is also the 2's complement you can take. So that is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So third question is expand ASCII and EBCDIC. So answer is American Standard Code for Information Interchange and Extended Binary Coded Decimal interchange code EBCD IC. You can answer it easily, isn't it? Within first five minutes, you can answer most of the questions, right? Next is mention any two Boolean postulates. So learn the postulates. So fourth question, you can have the postulates. I have given two postulates x plus x dash equals one and x into x dash equals zero. You can mention any other postulate that I have given. Okay. Fifth question is write the logical symbol and truth table for OR gate. So this is the logical symbol and this is the truth table. Next question is why NAND and NOR gates are called as the universal gates? So the answer is 
NAND and NOR are called universal gates because they perform all the logical operations of the basic gates and or not. You can create any circuit or any gate with the help of NAND and NOR gate. You can universally apply it to design any other gates. So it is called as the universal gate. So next question is define flip-flop. Mention any two types of flip-flop. The answer here is a flip-flop is a circuit that has two stable states and can be used to store the state information. So it's going to store the state information, previous state information. Example, you can have set of flip-flops, you know about it. SR flip-flop, D flip-flop, JK flip-flop, T flip-flop. You can mention any two, okay? Next question is, what do you mean by combinational circuit? Give an example. So answer you can give a combined circuit, combinational circuit is uh, the combination of the logic gates, combinational circuit, combination of logic gates whose inputs at any time are determined directly from the present combination of the inputs, not from the previous output. It is going to consider only the current input in combinational circuit. Example you can I have given is adder. You can give adder, subtractor, multiplexer or decoder, encoder, anything you can give. I have given the example as adder. Next question is mention the types of shift registers. What are the types of shift registers? Serial in, serial out. Serial in, parallel out, parallel in, serial out, parallel in and parallel out shift register. So next question is differentiate between micro and mini computers. I have given the answer here. Micro computer and mini computer. So difference has been given here. You can take the difference in this. So difference between Micro and mini computer. What is the next question? Define IO interfaces. So the answer is IO interfaces are the mediums in which data are sent from internal logic or internal components to external sources that is output devices and from which data are received from the external sources. So interface is an intermediate or a medium which communicates between the processor and memory and the input output devices. So the last question is what are interrupts? Answer you can give an interrupt is a signal sent to the processor that interrupts the current process that breaks the execution of current process that instruction or signal is called as the interrupt signal. So these are the answers you can give within first 10 or 15 minutes or maximum 20 minutes you can finish off first part questions or part A questions. Maximum of you can take 20 minutes even if you think that you need time to think and answer within 20 minutes you can answer part A questions. Then after that you can move to part B questions. If you have any confusion or if you think you don't know about the answer of a question in the two marks, leave the first three or four pages of the answer sheet and proceed with the descriptive answer and come back to it once you finish it. Don't write the answers, some answers in the first page, some answers in the middle of the answer sheet two marks question and uh, at the end of the examination you will find that you will uh, get a uh, idea that oh there is an answer I know about this two marks question. I will add it in the end. So it will not be it will not be a good practice to write the answers like that. Try to cover all the 10 questions at one place. Don't distribute it all over the answer sheet. 
try to cover all the 10 questions in one place or keep a continuity in the answers in the two marks question. Don't scatter it around the answer sheets. Okay. So, this is about the two marks question. Next, we shall move on to the descriptive questions. So, we have the eight marks question for converting the numbers, number conversion. So, you know about the answer 110111 will be 55 with 10 base BCA, B, K, B, C, A. Each digit can be represented as group of four digits. 252, you can divide it by successive division. You can solve it and get the answer. How do you convert a binary number to gray code is? You have to consider the three digit group in the binary. Consider this and this. If the numbers and the pairs must be considered, if the numbers in pair are same, then you have to mention it as 0. If it is different, you have to mention it as 1. Okay. If you check with the group, we have 1, 0. It is different. So, keep the first digit as it is. 1, if it is 1, keep the 1. If it is 0, keep it as 0 only. 1, 0, 1. First, consider 1, 0. They are different. So, it will be considered as 1. Then we have 0, 1. It is also different. So, again, it will become 1. Okay. When you consider this group, keep the 0 as it is. We have 0, 1 pair different. So, it will be 1. Whereas, 1 and 1 are same, it will become 0. When the digits are same, in the pair are same, so it will become 0. So, it is 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0 to convert from binary to gray code. Next question is the generalized step to convert a hexadecimal number into a decimal number with an example. You can write the answer in your own sentence. I have given the answer like this. Multiply each digit of the hexadecimal number with its corresponding power of 16. Where power of 16 is incremented by 1 starting from LSB, from least significant bit. Make the addition of each of the multiplication result. So example have given like this. So like this you can give any other Simple example you can give or you can make it complex. It is left to how you are going to answer it. Okay. Next we have subtraction of the 18 from 24 using the ones and the twos complement method. What is the answer? I have give, explained the method here. So first convert both numbers into binary. In first complement subtraction, find out the ones complement of this. So, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. So, you will add the numbers. When you have a carry, add this carry to this number. You will get the final answer. If you have a carry, add it to the number. In 2's complement subtraction, you have to find out the 2's complement of this number from which or to which the subtraction will be applied, which will be subtracted from the first number. For second number, apply the 2's complement and add those two numbers. If you have a 1, discard that number. If you get a carry, discard that number and keep the Final answer. If you want to check the correctness of the answer, perform the subtraction operation in the decimal system. So, 24 minus 18 will be getting the answer as 6. Check whether your binary operation has the same result. If it has the same result, the answer is correct. If not, the correct answer is 
wrong. Okay, you can counter check the correctness of your operation. Okay, next question is perform the BCD addition of two numbers that is 428 plus 729. How do you perform this? Here I have given the table of subtraction or addition, sorry, BCD addition. How you can perform the BCD addition? Now we have to take the BCD form of each of the digit 4, 2, 8, 7, 2, 9. So here we have 4, 2, 8, 7, 2, 9. So you'll represent that in a BCD form. Then make the addition of those two numbers. You'll get 0, 0, 0, 1 with a carry 1. Keep the carry as it is. Don't do anything with that. Keep it as it is. Then come to the next digit. Add them. 0, 1, 0, 0. Then you have another digit. Add them. You'll get 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so next, what is the step you have to do? If it is invalid BCD form, then add 6. Okay, in this three digits, are they in BCD form? If you check the first number, it is not, not in BCD form. If you check the second number, it is in BCD form. Don't do anything with it. Now, if you check third number, it is also not in BCD form. So there is a carry and five digit. BCD has only four digits of group numbers, isn't it? So it has five digit. So again, it is not in the BCD form. Again, you have to add 0, 1, 0, 0 to that number. What is the next step is make the addition of this. You will get 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. It will be kept as it is, this one. Third digit we will get is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. What is the next step is remaining bits except carry. So what you have to do with this carry, you have a carry. What you have to do is add this to the next digit's first number or LSB of the next number. So this one will be added here. This one is added here. For the next digit, you will get 0, 1, 0, 1. This remains as it is 0, 1, 1, 1. 0, 1, 0, 1 you will get. Then 1, 0, 0, 1 is the result. But you have to make it group of four digits. So here we will make group of four digits 0, 0, 1, 1. But one is remaining single. There is no one with it. So we'll add three zeros to make it group of four digits. Okay. It will not make any change. Right. So it will become 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So you can represent it as 1, 1, 5, 7. So this is the procedure of the BCD addition. You can check for the correctness using the Decimal addition, you will get 1157 only. Okay, you can check the correctness of the answer. Right. So next question you can have is, draw the logical circuit and write to table for the expression. So what you can do is, for this one, try to simplify it as much as possible. Use any method. This is the method that I have followed. If it is possible to do another way, you can do that. You can do it like this also. Y equals AB plus A dash B plus ABC. Then you can combine these two. It will become AB 1 plus C. So you know about the postulate. One of the postulate. 1 plus C equals 1. So this will become AB plus a dash B. You can use the same, this expression also or this one. Anything is okay. So you can use this one or this one or any method that you are 
comfortable with or you find you are you can solve this like this also so you can do any method try to draw the truth table for the expression you got if it is ab plus a dash b or b plus abc you can Draw the truth table A B C B plus A B C. Combining these two, you can write the truth table. And for the expression, you can draw the logical circuit. Okay. Next question you have is explain the working of NAND and NOR gates with circuit diagram and truth table. Okay. Answer you know about it. The NAND gate. What is the answer I have given here? the table the expression and the logical symbol everything for the nand gate has been given here next you have the nor gate nor gate explanation is given here along with the truth table the logical symbol and the expression next question is simplifying using k map so this is in sop form you have to consider the one in the table since it has four variables you have to draw a map of 16 cells so the cell is given here you can enter the marks uh, enter the value one and group it and simplify it you will get the answer bd plus b dash d or you can take it as b x nor d so next question is with circuit diagram and truth table explain full subtractor. Here I have given the explanation for full subtractor as well as the truth table than the circuit diagram of the full subtractor. Okay, this is the diagram for full subtractor. The next question is with a circuit diagram and truth table explain the working of clocked SR flip-flop. So normal flip-flop that we have uh, will be doing in laboratory or practical will be normal flip-flop SR flip-flop with two inputs and no clock pulse will be there but they have since they have asked for clocked SR flip-flop you have to give clock pulse as an input to the flip-flop so it will become three inputs so clock pulse high and low zero and one will be applied where the clock pulse instead of clock pulse the previous state of the flip-flop will be taken as the input since clock pulse has only zero or one high and low it will not be included in the flip-flop input it is not considered as the flip-flop input, but the previous state will be considered as the input for the flip-flop. Okay, so the explanation is given here. Clocked SR flip-flop is also called as gated SR flip-flop. It has the NAND and NOR gate you can use, but are invalid state. So explanation is given here. You can specify the truth table and the logic diagram of the clocked SR flip-flop. Okay, see here it is the truth table and here it is the clock pulse. Uh, along with the clock pulse, the logic diagram is given here. When S and R both becomes 1, Q and Q dash will also become same, either 0 or 1, which is not possible because whenever Q is 0, Q dash must become 1. Whenever Q is 1, Q dash must become 0. When SR both becomes 1, 1, it is an invalid state. Again, in the same way, when you have SR with 1, 1, it will become indeterminate state. So, this is the SR flip-flop. You can write as an answer. Okay, next question is, with a circuit diagram, explain the working of 4 to 1 line multiplexer you can give the answer like this so explanation is given here with four data inputs d0 d1 d2 d3 and single output y will be considered for two 
for four data inputs, there are two input lines that is yes zero selection lines, yes zero and yes one. So this has been shown here. Whenever the selection line option or selection lines value changes from low to high, high to low, the input will be selected based on the combination of the selection lines yes zero and yes one okay so this is the diagrammatic representation or logic diagram of the four to one multiplexer four to one line is four inputs one output four to one line multiplexer okay it, when it is become demultiplexer it will be one to four okay reversal of the multiplex will be demultiplex or demux which will be reverse 1 to 4 demultiplexer will be there. So this is the logic diagram of the 4 to 1 multiplexer. Next comes is the working of ripple counter with a neat circuit diagram. The answer is given here ripple counter the diagram you can choose for JK or SR flip flop diagram you can choose. Here it is JK flip flop. The explanation for the ripple counter is given here. Next question is with a neat diagram explain the Newman architecture. The architecture of the computer has to be given. This is from the fourth unit. Here I have given the explanation for the question. You can use input unit, memory unit, Secondary storage, in memory you have primary storage and the secondary storage. Then we have arithmetic and logic units, output unit, the control unit. You can give some uh, two, one or two sentence about each unit which is asked for seven marks. Okay. So the next question is explain the different input output data transfer. So there are three types of input output data transfer that is programmed IO, interrupt initiated IO and the direct memory access. So explanation is given here. You can add one or two sentence to get an advantage of more marks to the answer. Since it is asked for eight marks, write few explanation about each of the type that is programmed IO interrupt initiated IO and the direct memory access. Okay, no need to write too much about it. Just brief introduction about each of the type is enough. Okay, next question is with a neat diagram explain the working of DMA controller. Here we have the direct memory access. Explanation is given here. You can have the explanation and the diagrammatic representation of the DMA. You can consider the explanations. The next explanation you can have is this one. Next you can have the explanation like this. And you can add the diagram to the explanation. All right. Next question is explain IO processor with the block diagram. Okay, the explanation for input output processor is given here. You can write the diagrammatic representation of the IO processor like bus, memory units, magnetic disk, printers, input units, keyboard, all these things can be mentioned in the diagram. And related to that, you can add few explanation for seven marks question. This is about the question paper pattern, the uh, descriptive and the two marks question and how you can answer that. Okay. So before looking or start answering your questions, first read out the question paper neatly, May, note down what are the questions you can attend. Note down the marks for each of the question, how much marks have been allotted to each question. Based on the allotted marks, write the answer. Okay, this is about how you can answer the question paper. 
all the best for your examination do well thank you